You think you do, but you don't. Hey guys, I'm Lace TV, and today we're gonna talk about World of Warcraft Vanilla. It was released way back in 2004, so obviously a lot of things have changed during those years. So let's refresh our memories before the release in August and talk about some of the things you might have forgotten. The Dungeon Finder tool is disliked by many because it makes the game lose its sense of community. The tool was added into the game back in Wrath of the Lich King in patch 3.3. But what if I told you that we had a Dungeon Finder tool in vanilla as well? Now it didn't work exactly as it does today, in fact it was actually a lot worse. You either had to walk to the dungeon and use the meeting stone to queue up or talk to an innkeeper in one of the main capital cities. Now one of the biggest problems with this system was that it didn't check for your role, so you could be put into a group with 2 tanks and 3 healers or even 5 DPS classes, so it was impossible to complete the dungeon because as we know we need 1 tank, 1 healer and 3 DPS. And to make things even worse it could take you hours to get into a group, so you would actually end up wasting a lot of time by using the tool instead of using the trade chat and find a well balanced group. And this is why a lot of people forgot about this feature and not many players ever used it. The community is one of the more obvious things in WoW Classic, but it's also one of the most important things of what makes it what it is. It wasn't the raids or the PvP, but the actual community, at least in my opinion. When you played back in vanilla, you would recognize other players just by their name, and when you walked by someone, they would stop up and give you buffs, and people didn't fight for attacks, they would rather invite you to their group, and sometimes you would even end up talking with these people for hours. This is something we just don't see in Battle for Azeroth, and one of the reasons why so many of us are looking forward to the release on the 27th of August and the reason why so many of us have been playing the game for the past 14 years. Today you can kill the same boss multiple times by joining different groups, but did you know that back in vanilla this wasn't possible? Your raid lockouts were actually tied to the instance ID and not to your character, so if you accepted the ID you weren't able to join a new group until the reset. So what this meant was that if you missed out on a raid and your guild had already killed some bosses, you would have to wait for a full reset before you could kill them yourself. And did you know that some of the raids even had different raid lockouts? So for example, Zul'Gurub and Runes of a Garage resets every 3 days, Onyxia Slayer resets every 5 days, Molten Core, Blackwing Lair, AQ40 and Xtremes resets every 7 days. So as you can see you could actually do some of the raids more than once a week, which is pretty awesome. Now one of the things you are required to bring to raids are consumables because they will help you fight some of the awesome bosses in World of Warcraft. But did you know that back in vanilla the flask could only be crafted at an alchemy lab? But here's the catch. There was only two places where you could find such a lab, so you had to travel to either Blackwing Lair or Scholomance to craft them. Now the one in Blackwing Lair was located right after Broadlord Lash Lair, and the second one in Scholomance was located in Frost Whisper's room. So even crafting a flask would take you on a journey, and it's small things like like this that makes an MMORPG feel more like a living world. Sadly this was changed in Wrath of the Lich King in patch 3.0.8. So back in the day we didn't have a Lafar, the raid lockouts were different and crafting a flask would require some traveling, but did you know that some raids even required raid attunement just to enter the instance? Let me give you an example. So everybody knows Onyxia's Leia, but back in vanilla you had to do a long quest chain to obtain the Drakefire amulet and gain access to the raid. And to be honest with you guys, this is another thing that I miss in the game. Now I know that they kinda tried to add a dungeon attunement back in Legion, but it just didn't feel like a journey, it almost felt like they just wanted to time gate the dungeon and that's it. Now for instance, the Onyxia attunement would have you travel all around the world completing different tasks, and it's also one of the best questions in the game, so it didn't really feel like a grind, but rather something you would enjoy doing, and there are many players that would tell you how awesome of a questline it was. So we are pretty used to all the high quality maps in the game, but back in vanilla raids, caves and dungeons didn't even have any maps. If you were trying to look at your map inside of a raid, cave or a dungeon, the only thing you would see would be the whole continent. This made a lot of people use add-ons such as Atlas loot to check the map and the loot that the bosses would drop. Now I've noticed that a lot of people forgot that we didn't always have guild banks. Back in vanilla you had to trust one person in the guild to store all of your consumables and BOEs. Now typically it was either the guild master or an officer who was trusted with this task and it wasn't until the burning crusade in patch 2.3 that the banks were finally added. You 
probably heard about Pyrowood Village before, but the reason why I included it on the list is because it's not just an ordinary village. This village is located just beside Gilneas, and if you visited it during the daytime, you wouldn't notice anything out of the ordinary. But if you went back during the night, you would see that all of the human NPCs would have turned into Worgen beings. Sadly, this was changed during the Cataclysm expansion when they revamped the old world. And as I've said multiple times in this video, I think that these kind of minor things really matter, and I wish that Blizzard will consider adding cool things like this in the current game as well. This honorable kills were part of the owner system back in vanilla, so whenever you killed an NPC who was noted as being a civilian, you would get a dishonorable kill. This was initially introduced to the game to try to avoid people griefing quest NPCs and vendors, but this also meant that you could potentially end up getting a dishonorable kill while raiding a city, which was one of the side effects of the system. One dishonorable kill could pretty much ruin weeks of work and lower your current PP ranking, so a lot of people complained about it and they eventually decided to remove it completely in the burning crusade. Do you think size matters? Because back in vanilla it actually did. The size of your hitbox was determined by the size of your character. So for example if you played a Torin, you would have a bigger hitbox than smaller races like the gnomes. This meant that your melee range was a lot bigger as well, but you could also benefit by playing smaller races and you would have an advantage in places like the Warzone Golf. Battle for Azeroth removed pretty much all of the realm types that we have had since vanilla, but did you know that you could only play one faction on a PvP realm, so your choice actually mattered. If you went around and kept ganking the same person over and over, they couldn't just create a level 1 character and tell you how awesome of a player you were. In vanilla you had to put a lot of time and effort into your class. If you played as a hunter you had to make sure to feed your pet or else it would just run away. So you had to remember to always have food with you. Another thing that hunters had to remember was to make sure to always have enough arrows and ammo. Small details like this are what makes an MMORPG feel so great. And also I think that it makes way more sense that you have to get the supplies and remember to have them on you instead of them just being there. Other classes had to carry stuff around in their bags as well. Mages had to carry light feathers for slow fall, druid needed seeds and shaman needed onks. And this is just to name a few. Another thing that I feel like the game is missing is class identity. Now vanilla did a great job. For example, you could only combat dress if you were a druid and warlocks had to farm shards and so on and so forth. And if you wanted to do maximum damage with a specific weapon, you would have to actually level up the different weapon skills. On top of that you would have to complete different class quests. For instance Druid had to complete a variety of different quest lines to unlock their Druid forms and another example are the Warlocks and the Paladins. They had to complete a quest line in order to unlock their mounts. In vanilla the amount of debuffs that could be applied to an enemy was originally 8, but this was later changed to 16 in patch 1.7. Now the amount of debuffs was one of the reasons why guilds didn't stack some of the dot classes. For example, guilds never brought a lot of druids, and especially not feral druids, mainly because of how the class worked with all of its debuffs. Now some classes didn't even use all of their spells, just to avoid to take up one of the 16 debuff spots, which is pretty fun to think about. Vanilla World of Warcraft is about the journey and not necessarily about the destination. It was a long chain of adventures and it could take you months to reach the max level which was 60, but it also felt so good and rewarding when you finally did. Now equipping your first epic item could take you even longer, but then again it felt so good when you finally got the piece that you have been waiting for. Even getting your first epic mount could take you on a journey farming 1000 gold, because back then it wasn't as easy to get gold as it is today. Additionally basic things like getting from point A to B could take you a lot of time, but it made you feel like you were part of the world. It also made you appreciate the size of the map that the developers had made, which sadly isn't the case with flying. I could keep going on and on, but I think you get the point. In my opinion, these were definitely some of the things that made Vanilla so epic. Now Gurin is one of the most well-known characters in World of Warcraft, but did you know that he only appeared two times during vanilla? Once if you completed a questline in Moonglade called Shrouded in Nightmare, and a second time during the AQ questline Scepter of the Shifting Sands. 
Back in vanilla, professions had a big role, but with time they have become less and less useful and I'm sure you've heard a lot of people complain about it over the past few years. Back then you would even use secondary professions like first aid while leveling up, dueling other players, doing dungeons and so on. Additionally, some profession trainers were only found in places like dungeons, so if you wanted to get past skill level 225, you had to travel to the dungeon and clear your way to the NPC and learn the skill. An example of this is the enchanting trainer that could only be found inside of the Uldamon instance. Another thing that has changed since vanilla are the mounts. First of all, we didn't have any mount journals back then, which is why you had to store all of your mounts inside of your bags. Second of all, they had a 3 second cast timer, which was later changed to 1.5 seconds. And if you walked into the water back in vanilla, you would actually get dismounted as well. Some of the mounts even had race specific requirements such as the Mechano Strider, which could only be used by gnomes and dwarves. Or for example, the raptors that could only be used by orcs, undeads and trolls. So as you can see, it worked a lot differently back then than it does in retail WoW today. One of the things that a lot of people are excited about is the PvP aspects we had back in vanilla. Back then we actually had PvP vendors where you could buy awesome armor and weapons. But in order for you to buy some of the epics, you had to gain access to the Hall of Legends as a Horde player or the Champions Hall as an Alliance player. But did you know that you had to get to rank 6 to even be able to access the Hall? And even then, you weren't able to buy the best possible gear. To buy that, you would have to grind additional owner points and climb the PvP ladder. So as you can see, the owner system was was a bit different back then, but it also felt rewarding whenever you reach one of the higher ranks and you could show off your awesome looking PvP set. But it wasn't just for the looks, you could actually gain a lot of strength with these new armor sets as well. If you ended up dying inside of an instance, you didn't spawn at the entrance as we do now in retail WoW, but you actually had to run all the way back from the graveyard. Some of the graveyards were pretty far away and running back could take you a few minutes, so wiping inside of a dungeon could actually be pretty punishing, especially if you had respawns, because this meant that you would have to reclear the trash before you could continue where you left off, and this actually felt pretty great. So in retail while whenever you send a mail to a friend or your alt, you get it straight away, but back in vanilla you had to wait for an hour before you got it. And to be honest with you guys, this made a lot more sense because it's not an email you're sending, but an actual letter. I know that this doesn't affect the gameplay in any way or form, but it's just an awesome little detail in my opinion. Another thing that we've gotten so used to is a combined auction house between the factions. But prior to the Warlords of Dreno expansion, the auction houses were separate and the only place where you could actually find the combined auction house was in Booty Bay because the goblins don't really care about factions. The only thing they care about is one thing and one thing only, gold. Gold had an actual value since you couldn't just buy it from the in-game store, you were instead forced to farm it yourself which by the way could take you a long time. You've probably heard a lot of stories about how tough it was to get your first epic mount, but when you finally got enough gold and bought it, it felt so rewarding because your hard work had finally paid off. Aggro worked a bit differently back then as well. You would actually have to wait for your tanks to build up enough threat before you started doing DPS because you could accidentally aggro the boss and wipe out the whole raid. Some classes even had to stop doing any DPS in the middle of the fight to avoid getting aggro. Just listen to this. If you get aggro, it means you're going to lose 50 DKP because you didn't know what the fuck to do. A lot of you probably know that it's possible to lock the experience you get so you don't have to worry about accidentally leveling up, but did you know that this feature wasn't added back in vanilla so you could actually accidentally level up one of your swings. But luckily you didn't get any experience by doing battlegrounds, but it was always fun to see someone accidentally level up. So that's it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that there were some things on the list that you didn't remember and that it helped refresh your memory before playing WoW Classic in August. But please let us know in the comments below which things you forgot or simply didn't know about. Thank you for watching and we hope you are as excited for Classic as we are and we hope to see you in the game in August. Take care.